Hi everyone. I love making paper chains for holidays and birthdays and all of that. But I even love more loom knitting paper chains. I've done this, it comes out beautiful. You can use wedding colors, holiday colors, birthday colors, um, anything you want to celebrate uh, retirement. Doesn't matter, you pick it. If you're celebrating, these are beautiful. Okay, so it's a very simple pattern. It's a four row repeat. I use a half inch gauge loom. I just happen to be using this one. I do have some that I have ready for the next step so I can show you how to put them together. But right now I'm gonna show you right from the start exactly how to make these. I use half, like I said, I'll use a half inch. I use one strand of number four. This happens to be, I love this yarn by Hobby Lobby. The four row repeat that I'm gonna do is this. Row one is an E-wrap, four pegs. It's over four pegs. Row two, I owl-eye, and that's thank you to Deborah Shaw for that great stitch, the owl-eye stitch. It's becoming very popular, and I like to incorporate it in here. Uh, row three is E-wrap, and row four is flatten it. Um, if you take a closer look, I love the detail. It's, it's just that I love texture in things that I make. It's fancy. It's not, um, <clears throat> it's not just plain old. It's fancy, and it looks elegant, and it's pretty. Here's a closer up one of the fall colors for Thanksgiving. I can't wait, I'm gonna have a big dinner. I'm making dinner for 15 people. Okay, but I love it. All right, we're gonna get started here now. Let me move these out of the way so I can sit here. Okay, um, if you're using a Cindy Wood, I'd like you just to tuck the end into the anchor peg. If you're not using a Cindy Wood, um, then you have to do a slip knot. Any way you want to. Um, I like to place it on the peg before it and then start my E-wrap. Can't E-wrap, I'm just gonna use these four pegs. Um, you can also start it here if you want to, but I prefer not to do that. Okay, so this is why I love Cindy Wood. I love this anchor pin. If you don't have an anchor pin, you have to use the slip knot. Okay, it's just an E-wrap cast on four pegs. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cast on four pegs. Now I don't want you to worry about how your cast on looks because we are going to be folding this back up and putting the first four stitches back on the loom. So if you think your cast on looks loopy, don't worry about it because you won't see it. Okay, so there's the first. And then with flat knitting, you have to turn and go back. Let me do that again and make sure I got it on camera. Okay, the last E-wrap. Okay, then you, you just bring it back around and go back behind. Now it's being contrary. Okay, four E-wraps. And come back around the front and go to the back and E-wrap these all the way back to peg one. Folks, if you've ever videoed in front of a camera or tried to loom knit a video, it's not easy, so just please bear with me. Okay, so you'll just want to knit those off. Like I said, it may be a little loose and loopy. Just push it down. Um, with the Cindy Woods, you can just pull, pull this a little bit and that'll help snuggle, snug that up. That's why I just love, I love their looms. If you haven't tried them, they're an awesome investment. They're really nice looms. Okay, so now we're gonna proceed with row one. I showed it before, but I can show it again. Row one is E-wrap. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to E-wrap all four pegs. 
That's an easy row. This is also one of the older Cindy Wood looms where the heads are a little bit fatter. The new ones are sleeker and taller and work really great. And if you order any now, you will get the new pegs, which are very, very nice. These are nice, but the new ones are excellent. Okay, so that was row one. Row two is going to be owl eye. If you've never done it, this is how you do it. You wrap two pegs like a u-shape like that and knit off keep your yarn kind of loose you don't want to tighten it so much push down now where that yarn is on this peg now you'll wrap it again two and knit off deborah shaw has some wonderful videos on youtube check her out she has all kinds of new stitches coming out um, again, this is called Ally, and it's for beginners. There's no pearls or anything. That, actually, there's no pearls in these paper chain, yarn chain at all. There's no pearls. Okay, so that row was the Ally. The third row is back to E-Wrap. That's an easy one. We can all do the E-Wrap. I didn't want to include any pearls. I didn't want to make this hard. I wanted it to be an easy for beginners. Anybody that could pick up some loom and do this. Row four is flat knit. All you're going to do is take the yarn across all four pegs loosely. I kind of hold it back here with my two fingers. And then I knit over. Just loose enough that it won't pop over the top of the pegs. I mean, you want to keep it so that, you know, your work is nice and tension even, but you don't want it to get real tight. Okay. So this is what you have so far. It's not a whole lot yet. Don't look like a whole yacht lot yet. You can take this slip knot out now and let that hang in the back. Slip knot or your anchor pad. Just let, let it loose. Okay. And again, I usually, ha I usually do a little mark. Um, a slash mark or a tally mark and I want to do 10 of these four rows so you're going to be 40 rows total okay but I'm going to do all of these since it's only four pegs I like to do all of them and then put a tally mark and that way you would need 10 times I'm not going to do all 10 times that's why I already had some finished but I will go through it again in case you didn't catch the ally so the first row is E-wrap. And push it down. You don't have to push it all the way to the bottom. Um, there's no need. Just so you have enough room to do your ally on top. Again, you want to use all four pegs. So this one will go across two pegs and you kind of hold it. Knit them off. And then the, the same thing. Two pegs. From where your yarn is. Your yarn's on this peg. So just bring it in front of two pegs. It's sort of like flat knitting, but you're only doing two pegs at a time. Okay, the third row again is E-wrap. You can go either way on your loom. However you loom, um, I usually go to the right, but you can go to the left. And it will not make any effect or difference on your project. The fourth row is flat knitting. So you just want to take it across all four instead of the two for the ally. Okay. On the back, you'll see there's like indent, like here, it's like a thumbprint, and here's a thumbprint. So you know you've done, <clears throat> excuse me, two of the four row repeats. Here's one that I had done. And I don't know if you can quite see it, but 
there's like an indent, like a thumbprint. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Sorry. So that you can tell that you've done it ten times. Maybe you can see it better on the purple. If you, so if you lose row count, again, it's one. There's a, like a little line in here. So it'd be, it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. That's the best way to count it if you lose track. Okay, let's just do this one more time and then I'm gonna show you how to put them together. Again, the first row is e -rep. The second is ally and ally is very similar to the flat knitting but you only do two pegs at a time. You come back and do that same peg where your yarn is, it's actually being knitted off twice. You bring it back again. This is the ally, like I said, it's by Deborah Shaw. She has great YouTube videos, check her out. Again, it's e -rap. And the last row is flat knit. You will get, once you get going on these, it you, you will sit and do them so fast, you just won't believe how fast you can get these done. Okay, there we go. So now we've done three of the sets. Okay, now I'm gonna go to I'm just going to cut my yarn here. That was just for a sample. All right, we're going to go to this red one. We have this red one all the way finished. And now what you want to do is grab your chain link and where you want to put the red one. I want to put the red one inside of this white one. So slip the red, the white one, slip the red inside the white one. And we're going to put this back on the loom. Okay, just like if you do hats where you do the folded brims, that's the way it is. If you haven't done that, it may be a little bit difficult to you get it going here. But there should be four loops here. There's one, two, three, and four over here. But here's one loop, two, three, and the other is close to your knot, four. Okay, so it looks like this. Push these down a little bit. You'll put that loop back on the peg. Pick up that next loop. Put that one back on the peg. Get on there. You pick up this big loop here. Put that one back on. And then the fourth one should be right here close to this knot. Well, it's not a knot. It's your slip knot or your starter. And you'll want to put that one back on on the peg okay so now you have two loops on each peg just kind of tighten your yarn and then knit them off just knit it over okay tighten it up again and this time grab your tapestry needle your yarn needle this is a jumbo uh, yarn needle from clover with the bent tip it's excellent. It's one of my, the only one I use anymore. It's, it is my favorite. I've tried so many, but this one just works so well. Just pinch your yarn over your needle and then take it out and then just push the yarn right through the needle head. Very, very easy. You can also use your pick to do your bind off if you want to. So just bring it up, lay your yarn in front of peg one. Bring up through two. If you know my bind offs, you already know how this is done. And then down through the two lips, the two loops on the first peg. Then you'll skip a peg and go to this one. Keep your working yard in the front of your pegs. 
because you lay that across there by skipping, it gives you two loops. Just bring it down through both loops. Again, go up through the last one and down through these two. And then up through the last one again. And that's it. I'm gonna trim that a little because it's too long. Don't need that much. Okay, then just remove it from the loom. Okay, now your paper chain is free. It's attached to your white one that you put it through. I just want you to snug both ends of your, your bind on and your bind off. And then again, I want you to use your, your yarn needle. Again, I just like to pinch it around the needle and then it goes right through that large eye of the needle. And all I want you to do is kind of take it back across your bind off. And then trim that really close. Okay, and then do the same thing with your cast off in, your bind off or cast on, which, whichever it happens to be. Same thing, I just work it right back through that. And I like to trim it nice and close. There you go. So now you've attached that. Now the thing is, I like the wrong side. So I'm just going to flip this like that. Because I like the wrong side. The wrong side to me is beautiful. I love all these textury bumps. I like the bumps that you get along the edges. It just gives you character and makes this look so cool. So now you just added another chain. Okay, so let me show you that one more time. I had the purple one here for the fall. I already did the 40 rows, the 10, 10 little thumbprints here. Um, so what we want to do is grab this chain and whichever one you want to put it into or whichever end, you just put that purple in there. Only thing is make sure that your purple is not twisted. Like you don't want to put it like this and be twisted. Make sure it's not twisted when you go to reload the loops onto the pegs. Once you do this a little bit, you'll find these loops a lot easier. There's one. Two. three, and the last one, four. Then snug everything up there a little bit. You can even hold these two together if you want to. Just hold them down and then just knit off. That locks the two ends together. Okay, now take your one that you we're working on the last one. This, this is the working yarn from the cast on. We're going to use this working yarn from the, to bind off. I'm going to show you this time using the hook instead of a needle. Just lay the yarn in front of the first peg. That'll create two loops on there. Bring your needle, bring your hook down and pick that up and just pull it through. And then you'll want to go back and put it at the top and scoop up and pick it up and pull it through. You can do it with the hook when you only have a couple pegs like this, but if you're doing a whole half again, you would definitely need the needle and not the hook. So lay it in front, in front excuse me, in front of the next peg and bring down. And then bring it down through these. Lay in front of the next peg and go up and take it back and come down. Oops. Trying to hold it up for you. And then one more time you'll come up the last peg. 
Okay, and then you'll remove it from the loom. Okay, and you'll just snug up where you can. Just kind of snug it up. Then here's where you want your needle. And just run it. You can go sometimes, like this is, looks a little loose, so I'll just go right here and pull it through. And or you can go back and forth like this. Or you can go straight. And then when you get to the other end, just trim it real nice and neat. So the last tail, I'm just going to kind of weave it across here and come out that end. Then trim it. And again, I like this side, so I turn it. You know, if you're if you're hanging these and you see a seam, just you know, you're where the, where you seamed it together, you can kind of hide that seam like that. Put the other one over top of the seam, and you won't even see it. They're hard to see. Like here, you can kind of see there's a seam, and I could even trim this a little bit more on this one. I didn't get very close, but also you can do the same thing. Hide hide the seams when you're hanging it up. But really, you don't see it, and it's very pretty. These are really pretty. I don't know if you can quite see how nice they look and the texture. The texture's really nice on these. But it's a beautiful paper chain. It lasts a lot longer than paper. You can store it from year to year. If you're doing a Christmas one, you'll be able to store it and use it again next year. Like I said... Just hook as many of these together as you want and have fun. Make them any color you want. This again is the pattern. I will be putting a free pattern on cindywoodlooms.com and also on the Loom Knitting for Beginners Facebook group. If you haven't checked that out yet, it's an excellent group to teach you all about loom knitting and will help you to get you on your way. All right, happy holidays and uh, have fun. Thank you. Bye.